Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Scott Ratterman, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar focused on how, how law firms are leveraging managed services providers. Today, I'm joined by Rob Hearn, professor at The Ohio State University Moritz College of Law, Revolution Group's Director of Technology, Gary Dyer, and longtime Revolution Group client, Anthony Cacciatore, from the law firm McMurray, Peterson & Schuster. Today's webinar is focused on law firm best practices as it relates to technology and how many firms are utilizing managed services providers for support. If there are any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to submit them into the control panel on your screen, and we will have a Q&A session at the conclusion of the presentation. Additionally, this webinar will be recorded, so if you would like to share with any colleagues or anyone you think might be of interest, that option will be available as well. Now on to our panel. First on the panel today is Rob Hearn. In addition to teaching courses around e-discovery law and practice at the, at the Ohio State University Moritz College of Law, Rob Hearn is also the director for United Lexus litigation services operations in Columbus. United Lex specializes in data preservation, consulting, and document review. Hearn oversees a staff of 150 employees and support staff. Gary Dyer is one of our veterans here at Revolution Group. He has been in the IT space for over 17 years, counting, seven, counting 13 of those with Revolution Group. Gary is currently the director of our technical services, where he oversees our account manager and virtual CIO teams for all of our accounts. Anthony Cacciatore is an associate at McMurray, Peterson, and Schuster. He maintains a focus around helping clients understand and comply with federal and state consumer protection laws. Mr. Cacciatore is also experienced in active enforcement investigations, deceptive trade practices, and consumer fraud litigation. As you're probably aware by now, today's webinar will focus on technology and how it relates to law firms. First, we will have an overview of where the legal industry is today in terms of technology in the office. We will then discuss why firms are turning to managed services providers and the cost associated with downtime in the office. Next, we will discuss best practices as it relates to security around technology and close with why many law firms are turning to Revolution Group as a managed services provider. Again, if there are any questions throughout the webinar, please do not hesitate to type them in on your control panel below. And with that, I would turn the discussion over to Rob Hearn. Thanks, Scott. Uh, as I was saying, the legal industry uh, has been one that has been evolving and changing pretty dramatically over the past decade, and I've really spent my career trying to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to information governance and big data, and I also try to share my knowledge with the lawyers of tomorrow as a professor at Ohio State's Morris College of Law, Scott noted. So today we really have, we have additional compliance requirements such as Graham-Leach, HIPAA, and Sarbanes-Oxley, and data security needs that are much more rigorous than ever before uh, and even often demanded now by our clients. So as law firms look to adopt new technology to enhance employee productivity and control costs, uh, while effective, this also creates need for resources to manage their evolving system requirements and upgrades required to protect their clients' information. Uh, and since over nine out of 10 law firms are comprised of less than 10 employees, uh, this IT support is an area that if really not carefully thought out could have serious uh, financial and professional consequences. So I'm sure we've all experienced uh, downtime or an outage at some point in our careers. Uh, but before sort of noting how downtime affects us, I do want to touch on that there are generally two types of ineff inefficiencies when we refer to downtime. So one is the obvious scenario where your server goes down, and this is probably the one that we've experienced most. Uh, this provides uh, sort of blocks our phones and internet and emails from working and all of which are very critical to our day-to-day -day job activities. Um, but downtime should also be considered the additional time it takes to complete an antiquated task over completing the same task with an alternative and more efficient model. So the question we should be asking ourselves is really how much would one hour of downtime cost to a small to medium business? 
So most reports uh, illustrate that there can be financial consequences ranging from $20,000, as the slide shows, all the way up to a quarter million dollars for an hour of downtime. So what does this mean for law firms and how would this impact you? Um, unfortunately, this would be a time when you may not have access to client files or case notes. Uh, one could lose the ability to conduct research or simple tasks such as send emails or access the internet. Um, and the ultimate consequence here is I've seen downtime occur on days court filings were due and court ordered productions were due. Um, this can open up a firm to even greater exposures in areas such as failing to execute on a litigation strategy, uh, sanctions for those failures to comply, uh, stalled negotiations and ethical implications which can then lead to loss of clients both now and in the future. So downtime aside, uh, as law firms really look to enhance employee productivity, uh, they have been looking towards cloud-based technological solutions as well as new products that can often handle uh, billing, document management, and customer relationship management. Uh, when, when I personally have seen successful integration of these new software solutions, uh, it's typically the result of a sturdy platform uh, or foundation, if you will, upon which the solutions are built. So it's important here to know how to create and integrate uh, technical and, and business solutions to, max, to really maximize your investment. Uh, and this is really best accomplished once in a thorough evaluation of pricing, compatibility, and technical requirements uh, have been completed. But even with a strong foundation and security suite uh, or software suite to drive productivity, uh, law firms uh, today, they still have to navigate security concerns. So that's really top of mind all across the legal industry. Um, security is one of the biggest concerns for all organizations, especially uh, us in the legal industry. And the law firm's reputation relies on providing a secure home for sensitive case records and legal information. And yet, given the sensitivity uh, and seriousness of which this must be taken, uh, many law firms are still underutilizing their security, res security resources. So in 2014, um, the ABA did a study and found that 25% of law firms had no security policies in place. Um, and some even encouraged their employees to bring their own devices to use as their technology source at work. Uh, if I were a hacker uh, with the intent to access a company's confidential files, uh, where would I look first? Uh, I, I would probably target the law firm that's utilized by that company first um, because they would be the easiest target. Uh, so you may ask, why haven't I heard about this? But because law firms don't have the same obligations of disclosure, the public doesn't hear about these breaches as often. Uh, but many of us in the industry believe that the number of successful hacks on law firms are steadily increasing. So when we, when we think about what's at risk here, uh, this is really like private company information is at risk of becoming public information. Uh, and this can really encompass things such as merger and negotiation deals, settlement payouts, and client information such as business plans, IP, and trade secrets. So not only does it just make good business sense to provide secure networks for client, or client information, uh, some jurisdictions are even pushing for pro proactivity in terms of data security and expanding their ethical rules, imposing duties to safeguard uh, client data. So law firms are now moving uh, to continuous monitoring and reporting of their systems and are really starting to shift away from the old method of that break and fix model. So as technology continues to make its way deeper and deeper into our lives, as I'm sure we've all experienced, uh, many law firms have been looking to go paperless, um, update their practice management software, and also integrate cloud com computing. Uh, but maintaining the appropriate standards throughout your firm requires one to have a secure system and process for continuous internal collaboration. It's very important. And that the case management software is properly integrated and that the lawyers are training on how to effectively use that software. So when one of these pieces is weak or missing, it truly can put the entire company at risk. Uh, te technology, you know, big picture technology today is really becoming a cornerstone of every business and the legal industry is no different, uh, regardless of your firm size. 
So some may say, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't share this opinion myself. I actually uh, am thankful for it. But the endless days of uh, the days of endless filing cabinets and visits to the law library are quickly becoming the past, and firms are really having to tackle their own technology and software needs uh, and requirements head on. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Gary Dyer with the Revolution Group. Thank you. To piggyback off the statement we were talking about with uh, going paperless, a lot of um, misconceptions are out there about having paper versus a technology system is uh, th there's no cost. And paper does have costs. Storing the paper, managing it, administering it. Um, I know you've seen the, those locations with the large uh, rooms of uh, files, but there's a lot of risks with that philosophy. There is no auditing. There is no way to say that uh, Susie has checked out this file folder and has um, taken it to um, to work on and didn't check it back in for whatever reason. So the risk of that paper from the security standpoint alone um, is sometimes overlooked. And when we move it digital, um, there's a lot of things to consider. You know, um, we can now take your audio files, we can now take video files, you know, technologies come along way. all of the things that make up the files that you're working on. Um, so we talked about the security as well. If you're building edges on fire, there is no backup for a system. Also, if an fire has picked out in this type of part of the building and you have sprinklers over your filing system, they can get water damage and again, not replaced. So being able to back up those documents and servers is very, very crucial. Um, so I think this is talking about disaster recovery. And there's actually a, a difference today between disaster recovery and business continuity. In the beginning, everything you do with backup, you kind of root that in saying disaster recovery. But it's, it's really not that disaster recovery around covering your data. So typically recovering from our backup dates. Business continuity tells us how Susie can now continue to take calls. Um, how you can see your clients, how you continue to perform your business in the event of a rather disaster in your location or you're just unable to access your location. Um, that would be the business continuity plan. So the best practices with this are very important. Um, we talk about backups. Having your files backed up it used to be just a check mark. Yep, we're confident we have it backed up. But then let's say on a Thursday, we have a disaster and we need to recover the files. And in our backups, we go back uh, to Sunday. There's four days that I can't recover for you, but I can back it up from Sunday. What are those four days worth? Have we had a thought around how quickly I need this data recovered? And how long does it take me to recover this data? Um, if it takes me three working days to recover the data from the backup, download it from wherever it needs to, is that acceptable? So having these conversations are what your IT provider should be doing with you. And as a managed service provider, these are the thoughts that we want to talk about. And then also, of course, storing these backups offsite. So if there is a disaster, you don't want to be in the same position that you were when you were with paper, that if a fire happens to your building and your backups are in that building, they're just as lost as if the fire is all lost. So having this conversation about the best practice and how to store the backups, what to back it up, how quick we can recover it, all these are things that we should be working on together. Legal compliance and data security. I, I jokingly tell my team that policies will set you free. Um, having policies in place are more important than having technical safeguards. You should have things like acceptable use. What are we allowed to do on our laptops? What are we not allowed to do? How should we be using them? And it's as simple as filling out a form and making sure people sign it as they're logging in. And then again, Revolution will help you with these different type of uh, policies. But mobile endpoint responsibility. There was a day where having your email on your phone um, became a commonplace, and we're long past that now. Having iPads and smart devices. What information are your employees allowed to have on there? Have they signed anything? Do you have a policy in place to say what you can and cannot do on your mobile devices? And the same with remote access. Now with everybody having their own laptops and home computers, what are you allowed to work on from your home computer? And do you have that written out in a policy? Um, having this mobility to, to be in the field is amazing, but we need to put safeguards around that and make sure we have the right policies in place. 
Um, Pin Revolution also works on securing you from the technical side, from the from the geek side, I like to say, with making sure we have a firewall with deep packet inspection, um, making sure it does more than just typical blocking. Uh, make sure your spam filtering is more of an email security, educating people that most of your malware, most of your malicious things that happen on your network come from a spam from an attachment that somebody opened that was from somebody they didn't even recognize. Um, so putting safeguards in place there is also important. And then, of course, antivirus desktops and server antivirus to make sure that the, we're doing all the scanning and protecting we can. So security in today's plant takes several facets. We have to protect you from multiple ways of uh, these are threats get to your users. Updating your law practice management software. Your law practice management software is your everything. It's your lifeline. Um, knowing how those work and how those function are crucial for you uh, picking a provider. Make sure you know that, especially when you have the applications where, as you see here, you could have um, a portal access where somebody fills out a self-serve um, living will and they walk through all the processes and it sends it to their attorney to review for them. Well, somewhere on your infrastructure, somebody had to allow that access through. Our job is to work with you to make sure just because we poke these holes into your environment that allow this functionality that benefits your clients, that we're still protecting you and making sure your infrastructure is set up in a way that this is the most secure way to do it. Um, and if you don't have a law practice manager software, our team will help identify what your needs are, what your firm can utilize best, and select a um, law practice management software that's best fits your needs. And then as you own that moving forward, making sure the multiple updates that come out every, every year are applied timely so you're on the most current version of that and helping you navigate those waters of what we do. Um, cloud computing, you can't turn on any um, commercial today without hearing something about cloud computing or any trade magazine we read. But there's a lot of things around it. We want cloud computing to be able to work so that um, you're able to be in the field and do the things that you do when you're in the office. But when we talk about this, the first thing that always comes up in my client meetings is security. What about security with these things? And the funny thing is we talked earlier about having firewalls in your location. And when you have your stuff in the cloud, you're really having it on a server somewhere else instead of in your location. And typically, those are in a data center. Data centers also that would have your information would have financial institutions, medical institutions, and we have enterprise-grade firewalls protecting all of that. So you actually get a higher tier enterprise level infrastructure that your stuff is on when it's in the cloud that you don't have in your current facility. Um, when you go to a data center, for instance, you have to be escorted around to get access to the, the servers and the files. And then if we go all the way back to still being paperless, you can see that the difference is uncanny. Is so also the mobility. Um, having the ability to work on your files from Panera or from home or going to your client's house and having your meeting and being able to pull up their laptop and have all the information as if you're sitting in your office makes a huge, huge difference. Um, the backup and recovery of that, once it's in the cloud, it's much easier to recover. It's much easier to just spin up a new version of your software and have it running. And then this leads right into the next slide, uh, bullet point where disaster recovery and business continuity becomes the same because now if your location catches on fire, has a disaster, your data is not there. It's in the cloud already. So now our business continuity plan talks about Sally then porting the phones to her cell phone and be able to work from home or from a, a restaurant or Panera like and be able to do what she needs to do. And again, your, your lawyers are able to continue working on their cases, continue doing what they need to do while whatever issues happen at your main office is handled. And then there's a predictable cost with that. There's a monthly recurring cost that you deal with from now on instead of these yearly or bi-yearly spikes of having to buy new hardware, new licenses, new equipment. It's all bundled into that monthly recurring cost that's more predictable. And this is easier for, for us to uh, plan for your growth and your capacity. We can crank up the speed of the servers, add more space, all of that without large uh, capital investments up front. And now I'd like to turn it over to Anthony Cacciatore. All right, thank you very much. Um, I just want to speak uh, a bit about how our relationship with Revolution 
and really started and, and really what they've done for us. And so in order to really uh, get that across, I think it's best to kind of give you a brief idea of what kind of firm we are. So McMurray, Peterson, Schuster has been around for just under 10 years. We've got roughly 10 attorneys, and we have just a smaller number than that of full-time staff. And our firm deals primarily with um, broad consumer compliance issues. And we, we try to optimize it so that the clients that we serve, we provide um, compliance advice on the front end, and we take care of their needs and, and try to keep them in compliance as best as possible while also offering a litigation back end in case issues you know, inevitably arise or uh, a, a state or federal enforcement or investigation action is triggered. Uh, and so because of that, you know, we really want to streamline what we're doing because we don't have a very broad support staff. We want to be able to utilize uh, an outside IT firm that, comes, that can come in doesn't need a lot of training um, for what we need to explain to them in terms of what we want to accomplish and what our larger mission is, but can really uh, you know, kind of teach themselves and, and move forward at a pace that they're supplementing what we're doing and we're not managing what they're doing. Um, because really, we, you know, we need to have our attorneys spending as much time billing as possible and, and developing client relationships and providing the advice that we're known for and not working on issues uh, when a computer crashes or when we need to have a server upgrade and really trying to uh, figure out the bids of what parts we need to buy or what servers we really need to integrate. Uh, so that's a bit about us and that's really the direction we're going. So to talk a bit about that, I, I want to explain that within the last couple of years, uh, McMurray, Pierce, and Schuster, or MPS as I'll refer to it, really kind of hit a really good growth spurt. Business is going going great. You know, we're able to expand, and we need that time and we need that flexibility to capture on those growth opportunities. Uh, and prior to about two years, prior to now, about two years ago, we had an IT firm. Uh, it was a local firm, and it was about the same size as we were. And I would say probably when, we, when MPS initially started, and it was uh, four attorneys, it offered a lot of bang for your buck. You know, they would come in. And they would assess the situation after it had already occurred. So we maybe we experienced a problem with a computer not booting up or accessing the server or a cell phone can't get email access. They might come in. Um, usually they try to do it over the phone and, and fix things as they could and, if necessary, schedule a visit for the next day. Um, and it worked okay, but it was really kind of a, you know, if it breaks, we'll fix it type of, of method of managing problems. Which, you know, when you look at our greater business and, and our mission and what we're trying to achieve, it really doesn't fit very well because we're sitting here trying to advise our clients on all the reasons why you need to comply with these consumer laws and you need to be doing things in your business practices now and not, you know, solving things as litigation pops up and trying to settle things. That's going to cost you more time and money. Well, honestly, that was the approach that we were taking initially with our tech support. And we kind of came to this conclusion within the last couple of years that that's just not an efficient way of doing business. Uh, we're losing money on it. It doesn't fit with what, you know, the advice we're giving our own clients. It's not something that's going to allow us to grow unimpeded because you know, we have to sit there and we have to spend time really trying to figure out, okay, do we need to call on the IT company? Um, do we need to pay them the money to get them in faster? Are we paying them enough? Are we getting enough service? And the problem quickly became evident that they're not growing with us and that this break-fix method is not viable uh, for growing beyond just a small collection of attorneys. So we uh, reached out to a few friends, and um, on the next slide, we'll kind of talk about um, how we got to know Revolution Group. And, you know, we really got to know them through a way that also works well for finding clients for us, through referrals and through networking. Uh, Revolution Group came highly recommended to us from uh, several people throughout the area, and from the initial meeting, everything has been consistent. You know, it, it's it's very rare that we only see one of these guys at a time. Uh, usually, they come in, in pairs or in groups of three, and it's absolutely great because you know they can they can set multiple minds to work on one issue at a time, whether it's one person remote and one on site or two people sitting in a meeting with us talking about 
the next big capital upgrade that we need to go after and, and offering us alternatives and really talking us through the process. You know, it, it really enabled us to focus more on the strategic growth and serving our clients rather than getting bogged down in the details of you know, how many uh, terabytes on server space do we need or how are we going to sync up, um, log me in so that people can work remotely. Essentially what we do is we come up with the policy that we want to execute when it comes to mobile working or you know, what computer hardware upgrades we want to go after and then we give it to Revolution Group and hand it over to them and they can take care of the implementation and really what's been incredibly beneficial is the training. Um, we have actually gone through a period very recently where we brought in a new document management software and it's very exciting. It's really going to allow us to sync it up with our billing software in a way where we'll get better metrics and, and a better control of our documents. But the downside is there's a huge training wall that you have to overcome. But luckily for us, having Revolution Group on board, we're able to say, guys, we really want to implement the software. Can you take a look at it, get back to us, and tell us what you think about implementing it and what your plan is? And sure enough, within a week or two, we hear back from them with a recommendation of how they want to roll it out and how they plan to train us on so that all we have to do is attend the training sessions and give them the access that they need and everything else is taken care of without us having to get involved. Uh, and you know, that, that's really, really great for strategic planning. But the other great thing that we get from Revolution Group is um, you know, having that IT team that, that comes in and has the scheduled maintenance. Someone who will be there checking in, keeping regular business hours that says, okay, you know, we haven't heard from you in a while. How are things going? Um, are your computer needs being met? Are you having any challenges? Any, any little nuances. Um, and in addition to that, lastly, I would say these are things that happen in the background that we don't see and, and thankfully don't really need to deal with unless uh, an issue surfaces, wherein, you know, we don't have to worry about the security settings of our software and, and whether or not we're protected. We just know that we've hired uh, competent vendors to go in and manage that for us because, you know, frankly, we're not going to be the subject matter expert, nor should we be the subject matter expert for these types of issues. But uh, it is incumbent on us as attorneys to really understand the big picture of what's going on because it impacts our clients down the road. And, you know, that's, that's another reason why we're really really happy with the service we're getting now because you know, it helps us in our duty as an attorney, um, especially within Ohio where the rules of professional conduct have actually changed within the last year um, and the rules for competency of now requiring attorneys to really understand the legal uh, and technical risks of, of software and, and how that um, relates to protecting client fi files and keeping client confidences. So with Revolution, you know, we can tell them this is what we expect and, and this is what we need you to do and they really are the subject matter expert that executes on that and really takes care of it for us. So you know, to kind of bring this all together, um, the great thing that we, we really experienced is just someone to manage and take care of our, our IT implementation for us. Um, we're spending more time practicing law and we're able to offer better service to our client because we're not bogged down in those little details uh, that you, you, know, you don't see because they crop up unexpectedly. Um, we're able to essentially hand it over to Revolution Group. It's a transition that was, you know, compared to other vendors, largely painless. And, you know, we can go back and we can look through our billing software and we've analyzed over uh, quarterly increments and, and now uh, over the last year or so, really where we've saved hours. And, you know, really where we're coming out ahead just because we have brought in a vendor who understands our, um, our market, understands how we uh, uphold ourselves within um, our own rules of competency and within our own personal expectations, and they're ready and able to scale with us. So as we change and as we redefine our strategic goals, we don't have to worry about, you know, is it time to switch to a different provider because 
we're happy with Revolution and we know that they have the resources and the capability to handle any new challenge that we throw at them. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, first, I would like to thank our panelists, uh, Rob Hearn, Anthony Cacciatore, and Gary Dyer, for their time and input uh, on the subject matter today. I would also like to thank everyone for coming out to attend our webinar around how law firms are leveraging technology. Hopefully, you found the information uh, informative and useful. Again, if there are any questions, please feel free to uh, reach out to me. And again, thanks for the time. Have a great rest of the week.